Okay, guys, hellos. Uh, thank you so much for being on time. People that is already here. So uh, it's already time for us to start. I'm pretty sure that the other ones are going to get connected uh, in some minutes. So before we start, I would like to ask you, can you guys hear me clearly? Hello? Can you guys hear me? Good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Can you hear me? Can you listen to me? Yes. Yes, okay. teacher. Okay. I listen to you. Perfect. So uh, today we're going to start. Welcome once again to the class. It's really nice to see that you're here on time. I do appreciate the fact that you are here on time. I'm pretty sure the other ones are going to be connected in in a minute or so. So uh, today, before we start today's topic, I'm going to ask you some questions regarding to the topic that we suggest. Okay, it's just a brief review about the things that we suggest. Today, guys, we are going to be focusing a little bit more on pronunciation and intonation of things. So if at any point or something during the class, you have any question, please ask the questions as much as possible, okay? Because as I said, today class is going to be focused more on pronunciation and intonation of things. So I will request your participation a lot because it's very important for me to listen to you that you are pronouncing things correctly, okay? So for the ones that just connected, welcome to the class. So um, I'm going to ask you right now some questions regarding to the topic that we suggested yesterday. Let me see. Uh, I will ask uh, Ives Rosales, are you there? Yeah. Were you in the class yesterday? No. Oh, you were not? No, no, today is my first day. All right, no problem. So let me see, uh, Maximo, I'm pretty sure that you were in the class yesterday. You there, sir? Yes, teacher. Okay, cool. So let me ask you a question, uh, Maximo. What's the question that we use when we want to know the frequency of something? How often? How often? Very good. Um, can I use, thank you very much. Uh, Mary, can I use auxiliaries when I ask the question, how often? Can I use auxiliaries there? Yes, sir. Teacher. Yes. Your audio isn't clear. Oh, it's not clear. All right, I don't know. That's, that might be a problem. <clears throat> connection problem or something. Let me try to check. Uh, all right. Okay, thanks for letting me know. Can you hear me clearly now? Or still there's some interference there? A little bit. That might be the weather, something like that, or I don't know, probably internet connection. If if necessary, I will I will appreciate if you let me know or something happens or it's not clear. I will appreciate if you let me know so, okay? So thanks, thank, thank you so much for that, Maximo. So uh, I don't know if you understood the question that I was asking you, Rosemary, about the auxiliaries. Can I use auxiliaries when I make a question using how often? I'll do and does. Do and does. Okay, can I use any other one? Or uh, am I only going to use do and does? Sonia, what do you think? Can I use another one? Or I can only use do or does? Thank you. 
No, I don't remember. You don't remember. Okay, let me no. see. Uh, Patricia Rodriguez, what do you think? Can I use any other auxiliary? Uh, like in any other tense? I don't know. Yes, the use in the past, the B. D. 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 Okay. Very good. Now, let me see. Uh, Elizabeth Giron. Tell me at least four adverbs of frequency. Elizabeth, are you there? Good night. Good evening. Hello. Um, always. Mm -hmm. Usually. Uh -huh. uh, normally. Often. Normally. Often. Okay. Some Leave it there. Thank you very much. Four. Let me see. Which ones are missing, Cecilia Rivas? Is there some others that you can mention? Good evening. Um, I don't, uh, I not remember. You don't Sorry. remember. <laughs> it's fine. Sorry. It's fine. Carlos Antonio, how about you? Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Repeat, please. Can you mention some other adverbs of frequency? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, seldom, mm -hmm. occasionally, hardly ever, mm -hmm. never, sometimes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Always. Always. Okay, very good. Now, this question is for you in general. Do I have or does it exist or do exist words of frequency or expressions of frequency or I just have adverbs of frequency? Do exist words or expressions of frequency or I only have adverbs of frequency. What do you guys think? Expression of frequency. Okay, expression of frequency. Can you tell me at least one or two? Maybe it could be, um, I have, uh, let me see. Sometimes I watch TV in a cat. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, well, it's fine. I, my, okay, my, my friends play soccer in a cat, for example. Uh, it's not an other because because the word express mm -hmm. more than other. Okay. Okay, very good. Thanks for your opinion, Ivy. Thank you very much. So um, let me see. Uh, Luis, are you there? Yes, teacher. Okay. Can you tell me one word or one expression of frequency? One or two? Um, word, no adverbs. Not adverbs. Word or expressions of frequency? <laughs> if you don't know it, it's fine. Now, teacher. Uh, okay, no. looks like, looks like <laughs> you have to check yesterday's class. Remember, you have a YouTube channel or YouTube link in which you can go and check for the class that we had the day before, okay? Because uh, we do have expressions of frequency such as 
uh, twice a week, once uh, a week, yeah, yeah, every I'm day, and things like that. Okay, those are words and expressions of time. Okay, do not forget that. Now, let me see. I will ask you a question to all of you in general, and I will, I will write it on the chat so every one of you can have access to it. What I will need you to do with that question is to give me an answer to that, okay? Let me see. Let me write it down. All right, so you have the question on the chat. I need everyone to give me an answer to that question. We are 17 on the call, so it means that I will have 17 answers on the chat, okay? Everyone, please go ahead and do that. In no answer still. Okay, I have Patricia's already. Visarevalo. One. One a day. What are you trying to say, Patricia, when you say one a day? Uh, probably you missed one letter there, probably. I said, wait, okay, call my mom every day. Okay. Once a day. Every day. Okay, Evie. Uh, I mean, I, I, okay. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much, Evie. All right, I just have one, two, three, four, five answers of 17 people we are here. Thanks for the ones that already sent your uh, answer. So I have Claudia already. I have Maximo too. I have Nancy and Fatima. My mom lives with us. Okay, Maximo, let me ask you a question. Where is the word of frequency or where is the adverb of frequency in your answer? Is that I cannot see any word or it's there. It's not there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, now, Fatima Guardado. I hear that you said, I call my mom normally three times a day. Okay, the position, the position of the adverb of frequency, which is normally, is not at the right place. Remember that yesterday we saw a formula and on the formula, it was explaining the position of the adverb of frequency. In this case, uh, normally, what it should be normally. Can all of you see what Fatima Guardado wrote? In the beginning, teacher. I'm, normally, I'm sorry. I call my mom. Normally, it can be at the beginning. That will be yes. fine. That will be perfect. Or do I have any other option, guys? Is there any other possibility to change that? Guys, hello. Am I talking to myself before, today? before the verb, teacher? Before the verb. So it will be something like, I call normally my mom? So it looks like today it's only me and Vilma talking. What about the other ones? I cannot listen to you. You're not saying anything today. What's going on today? I know that you might be tired a little bit. Some of you probably work during the day 
or some of you are just arrived from your jobs. I completely understand that. But this is just something very easy. What's the right position of the adverb of frequency? Vilma and Fatima already said that they think that it will be either at the beginning or right after the verb. The other ones, do you agree with what they said? It's beginning the, the noun, like a, I normally call my mom three times a day. Exactly. We have another, that other option that we can say, I normally call my mom three times a day. Thank you very much, Fatima. Okay, so let me see. I still do not see Juan Cruz. I cannot see your example here. Carlos Antonio, I cannot see your example here. Let me see who else. Okay. Ana Maritza, let me see. No, I cannot see Ana Maritza still here. Okay. Damaris, let me see. Uh, yes, I, see, I can see yours there, okay? All right, well, so this one always goes to the gym. All right, so I'm pretty sure that some of you understood. I don't know. Uh, can you, can you uh, please turn your microphone off? Please, thank you very much. Okay. So um, I was saying, guys, probably uh, I would like to know if all of you understood that because it looks like either you're tired today or I don't know what's going on today, but today looks like you don't want to participate. You're not very talkative today. Probably you're just paying attention to what I'm going to say. So as I was saying at the beginning, guys, today we are going to focus on pronunciation and stress of words in English. So it's very important that you pay attention to it because if you don't pay attention, you might get lost in the context, okay? So I don't know if you all can see the slide. Can you all see it? Yes, I see. Perfect. So just let me get yes, teacher. Okay, perfect. So as it says there, today's class is focused in stress and intonation. When we say stress, we do not refer to, to something stressful. No, we make reference to the stress of the words. Okay, not that you feel stressed about. It. It's not that, okay? So uh, let me see. I will request no volunteers because I will choose you. Okay, let me see. Uh, Nancy Maldonado, I need you to help me with the first point. Nancy Gutierrez, I need you to help me with the second one. Uh, Ana Maritza with the third one. And Damaris Vega with the fourth one. Okay, go ahead, please. All words that have more than one syllable have word stress. Thank you very much. Number two. One syllable is longer and louder than the other. Okay, very good. Number three. English word has is o oh, oh. no sé cómo se pronuncia la siguiente palabra. We say this own rhythm. Own rhythm. Rhythm. Now it's like uh, it's like you made the sound of the letter R. You say rhythm, and then just the, the sound rhythm. of the letter M. Rhythm. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Number four. Four 
stress plays an important role of correct pronunciations of English words. Okay, very good. So guys, let me ask you a very important question and I will write down that on the chat so everyone can see it. We have these two words that are very important to pronounce them correctly. And let me see. Uh, Sonia, can you give me a number from one to 20? Tell me a number from one to 20. Five. Five. Okay, vamos a ver quién tiene suerte. One, two, three, four. Let me see, five. Nancy Maldonado, are you there? Yes. Okay, Nancy, can you see the two words that I wrote on the chat? Can you? Word. Okay, Word. I need you to make Word. the pronunciation of both. Say it again, please. Word. Word. Okay, thank you very much. Now tell me a number from one to 20. Eight. Eight, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Patricia Rodriguez. I need you to do the same thing. Pronunciation of those two words on the chat. Word, word. Okay, thank you very much for that. A number from one to 20. Ten. Ten. See, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let me see. Rosemary. Go ahead, Rosemary. Word mm -hmm. and um, word and word. Okay, very good. And the last one, tell me a number from one to 20. 15. 15. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 13. Okay, Carlos Antonio, I need you to do the same thing, please. Uh, word mm -hmm. and words. Okay. All right. Okay. Guys, thank you very much, Carlos, for your participation. Okay. Let me tell you that. De todos que les pregunté, una sola persona pronunció la palabra correcta. Una. De todos los que les pregunté. So, how do we pronounce the words? ¿Cómo lo pronunciamos para que sea claro a lo que nos estamos refiriendo? Todos lo que lo dijeron, la mayoría, lo que les entendí fue palabra. No entendí en ningún momento que me dijeran mundo. So, how do we pronounce mundo? ¿Cómo pronunciamos? World. You see? We made the sound of the letter L. El sonido de la letra L, clear. So we say world, world, you see? Like LD, sonido de L de world. And the second one, que significa palabra, decimos word. You see? World, word. Cuando se escucha, se escucha claramente la diferencia. If you don't make that clear, te puede estar pensando que está diciendo mundo, Pero la otra persona le está entendiendo palabra. So be careful on that, guys, okay? That's why today we're going to practice pronunciation a lot, which is very important. Okay, we can see here, podemos ver acá, el estrés, or stress that we give to the words in English, okay? Here, the words that you can see on, on blue is stress. Ahí donde vemos el azul, ahí es donde vamos a poner el stress. For example, we say China. China. 
no decimos China, right? No, we don't say that. We say China. We say committee. Committee. So there we make the intonation of, or the stress of the word. Okay? Slender. Slender. Revelation. You see, revelation. Revelation is that we raise our hand, uh, our stress. We do the raise up. Okay? A little bit. So I'm telling you this, guys, because this is very important. Remember that we are learning a new language because we want to communicate perfectly with a native speaker of the language, okay? We are going to move on, okay? So we are going to see characteristics of pronunciation. And I will need, let me see, uh, Luis, help me reading all of it, please. Okay. Oh, please repeat, teacher. Uh, uh, no, listen. Very just good. read. Okay. Uh, all. All of all. it. Mm -hmm. Okay. When a syllable is stressed, it is pronounced. Okay. Longer in duration, mm -hmm. higher in pitch, mm -hmm. louder in volume. Okay. Here we have the past tense. So we say when a syllable is stressed, is pronounced longer in duration, higher in pitch, louder in volume. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Luis, all right? So these are one of the main characteristics that we have when it comes to pronunciation, guys, okay? So we're going to move on. I'm pretty sure that some of you have already seen this, so I will need four people, four, no, three volunteers, voluntarios, three volunteers. Hi, teacher. Hey, Claudia, I see that you raise your hand. So, uh, Luis, you're going to help me with the first one. Sonia, you're going to help me with the second one. And Claudia, you're going to help me with the third one, okay? Thank you very okay. much. Let's go. Okay. Stressing the wrong syllable. Syllable. In a word. Syllable. In a word, and the word very difficult to hear and understand. Okay, thank you. So what it says there, guys, is that if we do not pronounce the word correctly, it's going to be very difficult to hear and to understand for someone, okay? Number two. Stressing a word dif differently can change the meaning or type of the word. Very good. Thank you very much. What it says there is that if we don't stress the word correctly, we are going to be saying something different. Okay, that's why stressing the word is very important. Number three. Even, even if the speaker can be understood with word, okay, I can listen still with a I don't pronunciation. Perhaps. Um, or perhaps even um, a mouse. Mm -hmm. And cook and cook from taking place. Okay. What it says there, guys, is that for someone who is native speaker, para el que es un hablante nativo, it can be irritated if you don't pronounce the words correctly. The same happens to us in Spanish. The same happens to us. Lo mismo nos pasa a nosotros cuando alguien. No, no se habla bien en español. ¿Qué es lo que hacemos? Ah, something like that, right? ¿Qué me estás diciendo? The same happens in English. 
So that's why we have to learn how to say things correctly. And we have a clear example here. Tenemos un ejemplo bien claro aquí. Si se fijan, if you can notice, the stress is in different places. Está en diferentes lugares, el stress here. Si yo la pronuncio con el stress de esta manera, where I have the letter X, the red button there, desert, assert, desert, assert. Si se fijan, cuando yo cambio el stress, suena diferente, it sounds different. Incluso cuando cambio el stress, significa otra cosa. If I say desert, ¿qué entienden ustedes if I say desert? Es cierto. Es cierto. What if I say desert? Postre. Postre. All right, so you see, si se fijan, it's very important to stress the words in the right place. What happens if you are in the restaurant? Imagine that you are in a restaurant. Y usted va y le dice al señor del restaurante, al waiter, can you give me a dessert? Y él le dice, a dessert? How is that possible that you want to eat a desert? Le está diciendo que usted quiere comerse un desierto, ¿verdad? So that's not possible. So, desert, okay? You can see importance of pronunciation. Let's move on. All right, let's see. Let me see, I will need the uh, people that do not participate that much. So I will ask you to participate today. So Ana Maritza, go ahead, and Cecilia Rivas. Maritza, Ana Maritza, the number one, and Cecilia Rivas, point number two. Let's go. My style in Wall Street are common goals on news, news under in English. Okay, very good. Thank you. Cecilia. Okay. Stressing a word differently can change the meaning of type of the word. Okay. Thank you very much. So in the first one, it says that, is, that normally the mistakes are the common cause of misunderstanding in English. Why? Because if you don't pronounce or if you don't stress the word correctly, someone else or the person you're talking to is going to understand something completely different. We have the example right here. We will. How do we pronounce that? Vamos a ver cómo pronunciamos esto. How do we pronounce that? Uh, Patricia, how do we say this? This one. Yes, sir. And this one? Dessert. Dessert. Okay, thank you very much for that, okay? Yeah. So, it says, we will desert the desert by tomorrow. You listen? We will desert the desert by tomorrow. So, what it says there? What do you understand if someone tells you something like that? Do you understand, guys? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Is it under? Are you understanding? That's my question. Oh, lo que lo que crece en la oración, teacher. Yes. Nosotros llevaremos postres al desierto para mañana. You have the idea. It's pretty much it. Okay, so as it says here, guys, thank you very much, Luis. So as you can see, the last part of the first dessert is stress, while the last part of the second dessert is unstressed. Okay, so let's be careful. With that. Okay, we're going to try to learn today as much as possible. Maximo Artega, help me please with this part.
even if the speaker can be understood. Mistake with words stress can make the listener feel irrit irritated mm -hmm. or perhaps even amused mm -hmm. and could prevent good communication from taking place. Thank you very much for that. You know what? You have like a British accent when you speak English. It sounds like British. It sounds like that. But it's really cool. Okay. So what it says here, uh, once again, is that we would, the, the thing that we want to do is to prevent good communication, like to try to speak in the right thing, okay? The right thing to say it in the, the right place. For example, we have some other examples right here. Let me see. We are going to try to see how you guys pronounce that. Let me see who can participate in this one. Sonia, if you can help me with the first one, this one and this one, how would you pronounce that? Just say it, even though it's not correct, just say it, okay? Sonia, please. Um, present. Okay. And present. Okay. Uh, for me, the first, Present uh -huh. is a, a gift, and okay. the second present is a, como decir presente, no sé cómo se dice, okay. como decir estoy acá. Uh -huh. Okay, very good. You have an idea a little bit of what we're talking about. Okay. So it's, uh, but you pronounce them incorrect. So in this one, we say present, present. Present, present. So the first one is present. The like, what's the, what's that? If you listen to that, what do you think it is? It's a verb, right? Like you're going to present your homework tomorrow. If I say, and it's like someone gave me a present. Okay, so that's the idea. Let's see. Uh, Nancy Gutierrez, can you help me with this one, with the second one? Okay, teacher. The first is hot dog. Mm -hmm. The second, hot dog. Okay. So, do you notice? No, the, uh, thank you very much, Nancy. So, this question is in general. Do you guys know what is the difference when we pronunciate those words? Do they have a different meaning if I pronounce them in a different way? Or do they both mean the same thing? What do you think? The first is eating. Uh-huh. The second is um, animal. animal an animal okay so what do you think Juan Cruz is that right is that correct what she said what do you think I think he's not there okay Elizabeth what do you think yeah, I am. Sorry. Oh, you're hot there. Dog, hot dog is uh, meals. Hot, okay. And hot dog is um, like a pet. Like a pet. Okay. Yeah, you have the idea. If I say hot dog is the, the food, the food that someone sells in the street. So I say, I want to eat a hot dog. But if I say a hot dog, I'm referring that the dog is hot. I don't know if you understand the sense that I, or the sense I'm trying to tell you. So we have the last one in which I'm going to need, uh, see who else can help me with that? We're gonna see, but Cecilia. Cecilia, can you help me with the last one? Pupil and pupil. Sorry. 
you say that the, all the way opposite. This one was propel and this one was popular. You say that the way opposite, but uh -huh. thank you very much for that. So today, guys, the main focus of doing this is to help you to pronounce the words in the right way so you won't have any problem while communicating with someone who is native of the language. Now, we're going to try to understand. Pupil. I'm sorry, what? It's, I heard, pretty sure I heard someone saying something. Okay, so we're going to try to learn, guys, uh, rule. These rules are going to help you to have a better understanding of what we're talking about. So let me see, I would like to. To Fatima Guardado to help me with number one and Damaris Pega with number two, please. Okay. And number one, a word can only have one stress. In a very long word, you can have a secondary stress, but it is always a much smaller stress. Thank you very much. Maris. Only vowels are stress, not consonants. The mm -hmm. vowels in English are A, E, no. I, O, and U. The you. consonants are all the other letters. Okay, thank you very much. I'm pretty sure that that's very understandable, right? Is that consonants are any other letter than uh, vowels, okay? So here we have the two syllable nouns and adjectives, and we are going to understand today how we put stress in those words. I will need Carlos Antonio to help me reading this part, please. Thank you very much. In most two syllable noun and adjective, the first syllable the day of the street. Okay, what it says there is that every single time that we have a syllable noun, an adjective, the first syllable is going to always have the stress. We have examples right here. Samples, carton, colorful, rainy. As you can see, we make the stress on the first syllable, right? So I will need um, Patricia Rodriguez to read that again. Read it all again. Okay, teacher. Samples. Mm -hmm. Cartoon. Okay. Colorful. Rainy. Very good. That was a good pronunciation of that. Thank you very much. So let's move on. Let's see what else do we have. Oh, uh, do you have any questions so far, guys? Is there any question? Something that might not be understood at this point or is it is all understandable right now? If you have questions, ask the questions right now so you don't have a doubt. No questions? No, teacher. Okay, perfect. So let me see. Uh, let me see who else help me. Vilma Melendez, are you there? Can you help me reading this part? Okay, teacher. In most two syllables, verbs and prepositions, the stress is on the second syllable. Okay. It says that when we have a two syllable verbs in a preposition, we are going to stress the second syllable. For example, relax, receive, direct, among, aside, between. So you see, we make the stress on the second syllable, okay? So any question with this so far? So far, so good? Are we understanding, guys? 
Yeah. Yes, teacher. Perfect. Yes, teacher. All right. So now, uh, Maximo, if you don't mind helping me reading this one. If there is a word that ends in a consonant or in a Y, then the first syllable gets the stress. All right. Thank you very much. So when we have a word that ends in a consonant or ends in a letter Y, as it says there, the first syllable will get the stress of the word. Example, radity or radity. We can pronounce either one of them both ways. It's going to be correct. Say radity or radity, either or. Optimal, gradient, container. So the stress that we do is going to be in the first syllable. Every single time that you have a word that can end in a consonant or a letter Y. That's what we're going to do, okay? Is it clear at this point? Yes. Perfect. Yes. Okay, those jazz, the one that are saying jazz, I will ask you later when we have a practice. So we're going to see if you're truly understanding what we're saying. Okay, hey, Luis, if you don't mind helping me with this part. Okay. For words ending white white suffixes uh -huh. er, or or like mm -hmm. the stress is placed on the first syllable. Okay, so it says that when the words end in the suffixes er, or, or ly, the stress is placed in the first syllable. We have direct, directory, order, order, manage, manager. So basically, when we add both fixes at the end, we are going to make or we are going to place the stress in the first syllable. That's pretty much. So the only thing that you have to remember is that ER, OR, and LY, you're going to make the stress on the first syllable to pronounce the word correctly. Okay. Questions? No. Great. So let me see, uh, Fatima, no, Rosemary. Thank you very much, Rosemary. In the case of war, which can be used as either a noun or verb, the noun will tend to be a stressor on the first syllable and the verb on the last syllable. Okay. It says in the case of words, which can be used as either a noun or verb. The noun will tend to be stressed on the first syllable and the verb on the last syllable. This is what it means is that they both are going to be written in the same way, but if we put the stress in a different syllable, automatically, the meaning is going to be different. We have present. How do we say that? Present or present? This one right here. How do we say it? Present or present? Present. 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 What about this one? Present. present. Okay, very good. Okay, here. We have the same words, you can see the same words. We say import, import, increase, increase, okay? Increase, increase, import, import. So when we pronounce or when we put the stress in a different syllable, automatically changes and we're saying a different thing. For example, if I say import, 
I refer to an importation. Me refiero a importar something, okay? Importation around the world, like beans, corn, or something to import. But if I say uh, import, it's like I'm using el verbo uh, or the word as a verb. For example, like I am importing beans to Colombia. Sí, que yo estoy importando. So the verb, in that case, I'm, I'm using it as a verb. So I need you to understand that if we place the stress in a different syllable, the meaning will change, okay? So do you guys have any questions so far? Is there any question that you might have? Well, I will take that, that silence as a yes, as a no, I mean. Um, so we're going to have this uh, speaking activity in which I need you to, we're gonna go to the breakout rooms and I need you to, the words that are in capital letter to make stress on those words. Example, I will try to read it for you. The greens, will never agree to that. The Greens will never agree to that. The Greens will never agree to that. The Greens will never agree to that. You see, we make the stress in different words and when we put the stress in different words, we are kind of, kind of uh, emphasizing what or, or, or the word that we put the stress, we do that just to emphasize that what we're saying is an affirmation of what of the word. Is it understandable what we're going to do? Yeah. Okay, we're going to go, oh, please, if you're using a computer, if you're using your phone or something like that, I need you to take a screenshot of that so you can have it when we go to the breakout rooms. I need everyone to try to participate, okay? To try to do this exercise. If anyone of you know how to pronounce word, or if you listen that one of your classmates is not pronouncing correctly, and you know by pronunciation of the word, try to help each other, okay? Understood? Understood. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. So this activity, I need you to take a screenshot of this one too. And if we don't have enough time today, we will try to continue with this uh, with these exercises tomorrow, just for me to check if you were able to understand what we saw today. Okay. So can I can I stop sharing? Can I stop? Sharing? Yeah. Cool. So let's go to the breakout rooms and let's see how it goes. As I said, I need everyone of you to participate there. Please join your groups and I will be checking all of you there. Where is the sentences? Um, Araceli and Monica sent on the on drop of, of, of WhatsApp. 
Ah, ok. Ok. Okay. Okay, who starts? Anyone? Okay. Donación mm -hmm. en la... But, Porque si se fijan, uh -huh. la primera oración, la entonación la tiene en groups. La es segunda. Que, uh -huh. Sí, 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 sí. The greens will never agree to that. The greens will never agree to that. Uh, the greens will never agree to that. Uh -huh. The greens will never agree to that. Um, Yo creo que solo para no uh, son diferentes significados sí, verdad. o sea es lo mismo pero si ves cuando se enfoca en en, en, en darle la, la uh, ¿cómo el te digo? ajá el estrés a la palabra ahí te cambia el significado uh -huh. porque the greens we apareció la pantalla de Juan Ok, damos la otra lámina, damos la otra, esto me lo puedo ver, lo otro también, pero me interesa que los demás practiquemos, no hay problema. Ay, perdone, Juan, no lo había visto. No, 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 no tengo pena. Ay, no sé si mira bien ahí la lámina. Sí, estamos bien. Vaya, vaya, Juan, empieza. I know you say, she took my money, this is the example. The person one, I never say they took my money. The other ones? Otro? Para una cada uno. I never say she took my money. Okay, the other. Next. I, I never. I'm sorry. ¿Cuántos somos? Cuatro, ¿verdad? Cuatro. Sí, okay. cuatro. Dos cada uno. Bueno, sí, dos cada uno. Otros dos, otras dos, diga otras dos, porque yo dije el ejemplo y dije la, 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 la número uno. Say the number three. I never say they took my money. I never say she took my money. Okay. I never say she took my money. Number six. What's my, what's my? I never say she took my money. I never say she took my money. Okay. Para que lo podamos hacer todo. Ay, ya nos está regresando. Se acabó el tiempo. No. Sí, ya Pero falta eso... un minuto para las nueve. Sí. Ah. Bueno, un good night. Okay, guys, uh, I just checked some of you and uh, I listened to some pronunciations of yours and uh, they were good. Some of you were pronouncing or making the stress in the right place, but I heard that some of you in the word, in la palabra da, que le escribimos, said. Escuché que algunos se la estaban pronunciando said, but in English we do not say said. We say como que estuviéramos diciendo que tengo said, like in Spanish, said. She said, something like that, okay? That's a pronunciation of that. But then, thank you so much for all of you to participate in the activities. I do really appreciate that. Tomorrow we will try to practice a little bit more of it because the time is it's done already. So I appreciate guys for you to being in this class today. 
I will see you tomorrow at the same time by the same channel, okay? See you guys tomorrow and have a good night. Great. Night. Bye, teacher. See you tomorrow. Bye, teacher. Good night, everyone. Good night, Good night, Liz.